So you want to start streaming on Twitch, but you're not quite sure where to start. Well, believe it or not, it's actually a lot easier than you might believe. The very first thing you guys are going to need to do is head over to twitch.tv, go over to the far right hand side. You're going to see the option to sign up. So go ahead and select that button. And this is where you're going to fill out what your Twitch username is going to be. And then you're also going to need to set a password. If you don't want to put your phone number in, you can always use an email instead. Once that's done, go ahead and select the sign up button and your account will be created. The next thing we need to do here is select our streaming software of choice. Now, if you're on the PlayStation 5, for example, and you don't have a computer or capture card or any of that stuff, the PlayStation 5 has its own built-in console streaming features where you can just log in using that Twitch account that we just created and then go directly live from the console. If you're using an Xbox Series S or X console, the Twitch app is directly integrated on these consoles, allowing you to go live in a very similar fashion. What if you're using an iPhone or Android device? Well, you can live stream directly off of your smartphone by downloading free software such as StreamChamp, which is only on iPhone, but Prism Live Studio on mobile is fantastic fantastic and it works on iPhone or Android. Now the boat I'm sure most of you guys watching this video are falling in are those of you who are using your Mac or Windows computer. Some excellent free streaming software that you guys can check out, especially if you're a beginner, is Prism Live Studio, Streamlabs Desktop, and Twitch Studio. Those apps are great to get you started, but they definitely lack a lot of customization and flexibility, which is why my preferred streaming application is OBS Studio. It does have a steeper learning curve, but if you are gonna be streaming for the long term, this is the software you're gonna wanna learn. I've already gone ahead and created a couple scenes within my OBS project here, one being the starting scene and then the gameplay scene, which includes my Elgato 4K X capture card source. For those Twitch alerts, I just added a browser source and the link that I used to pull in those alerts into OBS was just found within my alert section of the creator dashboard. And then you go to create your alerts box, then look to the bottom right side, you're gonna see an option to copy the browser source URL. Now all of the activity that'll happen while you're live will pop up in the form of an alert over top of your stream. The next thing you guys are gonna to wanna to do here is to do an internet speed test. So just go to Google, type in speed test, and then run that to see how fast your download and upload speeds are. The speed that you're gonna be most concerned with is the upload speed. So as you can see, mine is 23.7 megabits per second. But if you have slower internet, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have at least over a three megabit per second upload speed at an absolute minimum. So if you're good in that department, let's continue on in this tutorial. The next thing you guys are gonna to wanna to do is head back over to your Twitch creator dashboard. And this time you're gonna to wanna to go to your settings dropdown and then go to stream. Within here, this is where you're gonna find your primary stream key. Now, depending on the software that you guys might be using to actually push out your stream, you may or may not need to put a primary stream key into your software. You might be able to just push live and you're good to go. But if you're using something like OBS, you can get a little bit more control out of just using the stream key option here. So you can just press the copy button to copy the stream key out. And then in OBS Studio, you can go to your settings, go to stream, and then within the drop down here, you're gonna wanna select the Twitch streaming service. You can, of course, connect your account if you want, but you can also use a stream key as well. And you're just gonna wanna paste in that key right here. Don't share this key out with anybody, just keep it to yourself. From here, you can head over to the output tab, and this is where you're gonna wanna set your stream settings. I'm in the advanced mode, but you guys can use simple as well if you want. Twitch actually created a guidelines page that you can follow depending on the resolution that you're trying to output. In my computer, I do have a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card, so I did copy the settings that are over here on the left-hand side into my OBS project for the best results. In the chance you start experiencing computer or network performance issues, you're gonna wanna reduce your bitrate by intervals of 500. Now, if the issue continues to persist, you may need to adjust your canvas to be a lower resolution and frame rate. Once you're all set to go, hit apply. Let's select start streaming. And within our creator dashboard, we're gonna go to the stream manager tab. And this is where you should see your live stream coming through. You'll have your live stream session information listed at the top. Below 
that you're gonna see your quick actions. The first one being to edit your stream information. This is where you can set your stream title, your go live message notification, the game that you're playing, and even tags. Once you've set that, select done. If something cool happens in the stream, you can clip that by selecting this clip icon. And then a bit more over to the right, you're gonna see all of your chat coming through to your stream. If there comes a time that you have a frequent viewer or someone that you like a lot and you wanna give them the power of moderator, then all you need to do is click on their name and then select that little user with the arrow icon and that'll give them mod. Once you're all finished with your live stream, just head over back to your OBS project and select stop streaming. And right away, you should see yourself go offline on Twitch, which means your stream is completed.